So you might be asking yourself, why am I here? Why would any of these cars need headlight restoration? Fair question, they don't. But most of these owners work in Manhattan and take the train from the suburbs to the city and need a train car, or what I call a beater, to park in the door ding, bumper scuff mecca of New York, also known as a train parking lot. These cars sit baking in the sun all day, and it's common to find them with faded or hazy headlights. On this episode, we're gonna walk you through the steps of how you can repair those foggy lenses. All coming up today on Drive Clean. This is Collector's Car Garage, where some of the most amazing cars in the world hibernate for the winter months here in the Northeast. It opened in 2005. It's four floors, 75,000 square feet of heated and air-conditioned space that can hold over 320 cars and countless motorcycles, and it's located in Bedford Hills, New York. Before we dispel any myths on how to permanently restore clarity in these lenses, I want to talk to you a little bit about why headlights fade, fog, or yellow in the first place. Believe it or not, there was a time when headlights were only made of glass, but those days are long gone. As plastics and technology advanced, a material known as polycarbonate plastic was used as a replacement to glass because it's lighter, cheaper to manufacture, and resists breaking from road debris as you're driving down the street. But of course, there's a catch. Polycarbonate is a porous material. Think about it. If you have a light bulb shining from the inside and UV rays shining from the outside in, Clearly, the plastic takes a beating on both sides. It's understandable that the manufacturer's UV coating deteriorates quickly. To help demonstrate this, I've asked Tommy, our cameraman, to set up a camera with the same exposure, same shutter speed before and after the repair to see how much light is captured by the camera sensor. To simplify this somewhat confusing topic, I've split the most common remedies into three distinct categories. Home remedies, DIY, and lastly, professional. Today I'm going to tape off the light into three distinct sections and show you how each one of these works. Some are good, some last a little bit longer, but today we're going to find out which one is going to work for your car. The most common home remedy is somewhat effective, but it's a very short-term fix that lacks clarity. I'm sure you guys guessed it, I'm talking about toothpaste as it contains micro abrasives used to clean or polish your teeth while brushing. But the downside is, it's not enough, nor is it the proper kind of abrasive for heavily oxidized plastics. The other popular home remedy is bug repellent with DEET. This has an immediate but superficial effect because the lens looks instantly restored, but the haziness will return in a few days. Bug sprays with DEET will melt or corrode the plastic, leaving it sticky or tacky to the touch. This is not a healthy or a long-term solution. The second category is what I call DIY. These are kits typically found at your parts store that contain foam and wool pads with drill attachments. This is a very effective and popular correction method because no pneumatic or electric polishers are needed, just your standard household power drill. With the wool pad attached to your drill, add compound to your pad and begin to buff the lens in overlapping motions with a consistent downward pressure and speed. The last step is with a foam pad and polish, which will remove the fine scratches installed by the wool. Then add your protection and your lenses are in much better shape. The third category is for professionals and the serious DIYers who are willing to spend the few extra minutes using sandpaper prior to any compounds or polishes. At this point, many people tap out and say, this is too advanced for the Sunday morning cleaning, but I assure you it can be easily fixed with a bit of patience, even in the most novice of hands. Because the perfectionist technique is a bit more complex, I'm gonna break it down into three subsections around sandpaper grit for heavy, medium, and light oxidation. For heavy oxidation, it is best to use 320 to 800 grit. Again, you will need to adjust according to the damage of your particular lens. This heavy cut process is done dry or without a supplemental wetting agent. It could also be done by hand or machine. You're gonna go in this direction. So you're gonna go east, west, east, west, uh, and you're gonna put some pressure. What you're gonna notice right off the bat 
It's just like if you are wet sanding a vehicle, you're going to have some dust that comes off. In this case, this dust is burnt up UV coating, which we'll talk about again towards the end because we are pulling off so much coating that's been dried and uh, brittle and is clearly not offering any protection because it's yellowing. <sighs> All right, so I think we've done just about enough. I'm taking off. We're going to clean that in a minute. There's my 800. Put that to the side. Put this down. Got a quick clean just to make sure there's no large contaminants that we just cut off. We're going to stay there for the next, um, next little uh, sanding part. For step two, we're moving into subsection two for a medium cut of 1,000 to 1,500 grit. In this case, I'll be using 1,000 grit for my next cut with a very little supplemental wetting agent, such as water, in a process called damp sanding. Step two is the most important step among the three because it will dictate the level of clarity with your final product. Your goal here is to remove the scratches and haze you installed in step one. However, there are two tricks to help you tackle this crucial step. The first is to use front to back motions instead of side to side as we did for the first step. This allows you to shave down the sanding peaks from a different angle, which focuses all the cutting power on the high points left behind in step one. Okay, so now you can see all the grit that's in there. So then I like to take, uh, this is just a uh, you know, water, water mixture here in a glass cleaning bottle. Clean those out. So now it looks fresh again. Okay, now with the light on, uh, the reason why we've done that is we can see behind and we can see the marks that we've made. Now, the marks that I've made that I can see are the ones going north-south. That's what my eyes are showing me right now. I don't really see, except for one or two marks here, anything going east-west, and that's the, what the goal is. So if I saw things going from east to west, that means I'd have to go back and go north-south to take those out. So this is a great way to sort of double check yourself. So, yep, I see north-south scratches. So on the next phase of, of sanding, we're gonna go east-west again and grind those off and it should be perfect. Once you're satisfied that the 800 grit peaks are leveled by the 1000 grit, clean your headlight again in preparation for step three. Our last sandpaper step, or subsection three, is with 2500 to 3000 grit, damp sanding once again. For this, we're gonna use horizontal motions because step two was vertical for further sanding peak refinement. This technique is called a cross hatch pattern that professionals find very effective. So this 3000 will take off the 1500 and get you pretty close to perfect and definitely ready for compounding and then polishing. Typically, this step is the quickest of the three. And when you're done, clean the headlight once again because working clean is vital on clear plastic as leftover scratches have nowhere to hide. By the end of this step, you will begin to see some slight clarity. All right, so the next step is compounding. And for this, I'm using the Roops 15 here. This is the LH75. And it is an incredible three inch uh, orbital machine. It's got a huge throw. And for this, I'm using the Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad. I'm gonna use some uh, 105 with that as well. Just like any microfiber cutting pad for the compounding phase, you have to spread in your compound. For step four, I use a leveling compound and a three inch pneumatic polisher, but a power drill or electric polisher works great too, along with a microfiber cutting or a wool pad. All right, after the compounding step, just like you did with the sanding, you want to uh, remove. You want to try to clean that off as much as possible. So use a little bit of water and take that off. Now it's looking pretty good. For the last step, you want to polish it out. 
And this is going to get you any last little bit of clarity before you put your protection on. In this case, I'm just using a foam finishing pad. Whatever one works for you is perfect. Come back in. You're going to put some polish on there. You're going to spread it in. Make sure it's nice and even. No sling. Take that. And now we're going to go back in just like you did compounding. And now you're going to polish it. <laughs> All right, after the polish, do the same thing. You're going to remove it, but this time you're going to clean it with isopropanol. A few little drops on there. So this is going to ensure that there's no leftover compound, no leftover polish, no sand, anything. This is going to be perfectly clean. Because remember, this looks spectacular, but it will not last because you've removed the UV coating that originally came with this manufactured car from the manufacturer. The very last step is to protect the new uncoated and porous polycarbonate plastic, otherwise the lens will begin to fade in months, maybe even weeks. For this, you can use a strong sealant, headlight-specific coating, spray-on clear coat, or a new aerosol lens protectants on the market today, but the key is they all must have a UV protectant built into the formula for them to be effective. Whichever one you choose, be sure to read the directions for specific application methods and ensure the lens is cleaned with rubbing alcohol for best adhesion. This looks fantastic. Now this is cleaned, now it's protected, and I'm gonna ask Tommy to put that camera back, shoot the light in and see if it looks any better. As you can see, there are a multitude of ways to clean and restore your headlights. Some quick and easy, but may not last as long, while others require a few more steps, but restore clarity, increase night vision, and extend the life of the headlight altogether. Pick a method that works best for you and the particular condition of your headlight. For more information and how-to videos like this one here, visit AmmoNYC.com. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. The downside is it's not the right kind of abrasive to have to clean. God damn it! <laughs> I wish you got that on film. It's really funny. I did. Yeah. Two cameras. Oh, it's. <laughs>